What is this? Why do you get out of here? Because I'll hide this for now. <laughs> I like I like this guy. This guy's funny. Okay, NPC Jam Part Three. Uh, yesterday I did a bunch of sculpting. Connor did more model work. Today I'm gonna start working on retopo or retopology, going over that sculpting that I did. Basically, just like tracing over uh, my like sketchy first pass with the the sculpting tools. And Connor will be just further working on the modeling. I'm assuming. Or do you have anything specific you're planning um. on? <laughs> Heads and feet. Heads and feet. No hands yet. Uh, we'll see. Maybe we'll do a hand jam. Those are fucking brutal. I'm still not very happy with these hands, but whatever. I figure doing the retopo will smooth out a lot of the lumpiness that came from the sculpting, and it'll also it'll be a lot easier for me to fix the proportions. If it's like actually good topology rather than this mess, but it, it's a general hand shape. But yeah, I need. I feel like I need to be careful about my poly count here. It's gonna be easy for me to accidentally go like way too high poly with this. I need to make sure I'm keeping it low poly. But yeah, I feel I, like I I saw some good low poly hands uh, the other day. Let me try and find them. I think they were on the move cord. I want to do like a six-sided cylinder for him, but I feel like that's too much. And like a five-sided, I guess, could work, but I don't... I don't know. Squ square fingers have some charm, for sure. They definitely could work. But I just... I, I feel like I want to go a little bit higher than that. But I don't know. It's hard to say. It's really lucky that humans are like symmetrical. Makes this process a lot easier. On the outside. Yeah, that's true. Imagine if you had to 3D model all their organs and shit too. Yeah. I mean <clears throat> if if we had to do uh we have to do Gibbs. Oh yeah, that's true. One day. <laughs> now it's a titan. This is fun. Just like having this general shape you do all these wacky proportions with. Like, I feel like I can make, like, ten NPCs from this one base just by doing shit like this. Yeah. Look at this guy. <laughs> I could just... It, it's so easy to just change one little thing and it looks completely different. Am I waiting on something? What am I doing? What am I doing? Uh, no, I'm I'm ready. I don't know why I, I was just like, I felt like I was just stalling. Um, so I, I did a little bit of topo off stream. Started on the head here, just to make sure I had the workflow and everything down still. But even this, I'm I'm a little worried. That's like that might end up being a little too high poly, if I keep that level of it. But at the same time, I mean the face is like one of the it can be one of the most like highly concentrated places so i don't know yeah it usually is maybe i could lose that i could probably lose that and that domino is it mr domino again 
It's a claim. Does a claim make Mr. Domino? Art Dink. <laughs> oh, I remember Art Dink. Back in the day, Art Dink was on fire. Domino! Oh lord, he coming. Oh, whoops. See, I, I have this, like, snapping tools on, so it snaps to the face like this, and it kind of, like, vacuum seals it onto the model. It's pretty nice. It's, like, a really efficient little workflow for this. I also have it set up so that this, the new retoppled one, always shows on top of everything. So that way I don't have to worry oh, no. about it, like, clipping through. Then I'll also, after I'm done with all this, I'll also do the shrink wrap modifier on top of it. Just to get it that little bit tighter. Make sure I didn't fuck up anywhere. But yeah, you can see I started with this loop and then this loop. Actually, I should complete this loop. So that's one, two, three, four... Five. All right. Wait. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So maybe I do that and then that. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. so funny I never I always associate this song with not looking at the screen for some reason I guess oh, I this is such know. like a background noise well like I know yeah I guess <clears throat> but I don't um, I never knew this was part of mr. Domino yeah that's the demo disc that Domino was on that's why it's, it's like completely mismatched Opium 18 presents. Opium? That's what it said. Or OPM. Is that the the joke? Maybe. What other do or demos were on here? There were a ton, but I um I haven't played all of them yet. But there was one like Tony Hawk ripoff, which was really funny, but it had a lot of licensed music, so I scrapped it. Then there was, um... The World Tour? Uh, I don't think so. Um, I can't remember a lot of them off the top of my head. There was a Looney Tunes game. There was a Spyro one. Uh, a Kooji the Heartless, I think. Was on there. A demo Ooh. for that. But yeah, I want to find more wacky ones like Mr. Domino. That's why I downloaded like a million of those. I also thought about this, this the other day. I have uh, demo discs from like the PC Gamer magazine. Oh, nice. And my grandpa used to be subscribed to him back in the day and he got, he just got like a huge stack of them. Like he was subscribed for so long and they would just send out these demos. And I, I have like all of them. So I feel like it would be so sick if I just had like the demo for Deus Ex or something or like one of these just huge classics, like when it was still being like marketed. Yeah. I feel like that could actually be like a piece of history in there. I, I went through it like a long time ago when I was like in high school still, but I feel like I've become more well-versed in games. So I feel like if I look at it now, I'd probably be like, oh shit, like that's in there? Like, yeah. There'll probably be a lot of bullshit though. See, this loop, I feel like that can probably go.
What about that loop? Hmm. Nah, I'll keep that. That gives a little bit more definition to the jaw. Okay, there we go. I was able to cut two loops out of it. I don't know, do you think that's too much for the head? Like... Uh, no. I have more, I think. Oh, really? Okay. That's good. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I shouldn't sweat it too much because the whole point is that we're trying to find a balance. So the extremes are definitely going to be uh, important. Mr. Domino can quiet down a little bit. So yeah, the uh, the clock tutorial. Oh yeah, how'd it go? Or well, what did you think of it? I um, I definitely see, uh, it was helpful, and I um, I definitely feel like I learned a lot about how Unity works and like how scripts work and all that. Yeah. The the main thing that I'm like concerned about with this series is like, I don't, I don't look at the future ones and go like, oh sick, like I want to make that. You know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. just kind of like, oh, I guess that could be important, I guess. Yeah, they're more lessons. Yeah. Like, it just, I, I guess I'm just being, like, an impatient child, but I just want to, like, it's like, I just want to make something cool, like, and it's just like, a, it's like how to make a graph, and I'm just like, okay, I'm going to do yeah, it for well, sure, the later it's just ones, not exciting. The later ones in basics are definitely less exciting, but they also, I think... I think what it is is like the way uh, those seem to teach you is like um, instead of looking up how to do something you like mentally figure out what what the code is of that thing like you just break everything down into math problems and, and logic problems I guess for the sake of the stream um, we're talking about a unity tutorial series that Connor's made a pretty good amount of headrun or group, uh, the pretty good amount of progress on, but I've just done like the first lesson on it, and um, I'm hopefully gonna catch up to him eventually. But it just goes over a lot of like mathematical, like it's a, kind of like a mathematical take on like the whole process, well, the, which I guess it is very mathematical <clears throat> to begin with, but yeah, still, but the, it, it's more focused. Yeah, it's just more abstract. Uh, where's the... I, I was thinking I... I need to do... I need to do one of them to figure out, uh... The, like... The object gallery thing. Oh, I see. Like, the all the props and all that? Yeah. That would be a really... A that's something that sounds it. fun. Yeah, but he, even then, like... <clears throat> it's not a a tutorial on how to do that. It's more just like something you think seems related. That's yeah, that's really what his what the things are. Like you learn how to do specific moves and then and that's a very smart way to do it. Cuz a lot of the stuff that I was doing in Unreal was just like this is exactly how to do this. Like they were just walking yeah. you through a process of how to make like a first person camera or whatever. And it would feel super janky. And I was just kind of like going through those steps. I definitely was able to make shit faster, I guess, but it also like was less about me being like a good programmer and like working things out. 
And I guess that's like my main weakness still is I, I don't feel like I'm a very good programmer. I don't like when it, when it goes into all this shit about uh, like how I guess like you were saying how that lesson is more about teaching you how to be a good like how to problem solve I guess like how to think through yeah. things first break things down yeah like that kind of shit seems really daunting to me of like having a problem and being able to be like oh like this is just you know like this is just the unit circle I could just use trig on this like I don't feel like I would make those connections currently but sure I mean I guess eventually yeah like right now I don't feel like I I do naturally but when I was in school I definitely definitely was more more of that way I think that's why I found them in the first place I, I feel like in general I've I lost some of that when I stopped going to math classes. I always like this stage of it. That's why I always choose purple first, because these guys, when I have it in flat shading, and they're purple, it reminds me of the dudes from Smash Bros. Like, I think it's from Brawl, like the crystal guys that you fight. Is it Brawl or is yeah. it N64? I don't know. Those guys look uh, sick. I feel like. Is it like the wireframe guys? They're like purple crystal shit. I know melee has like purple wireframe. Maybe they are wireframe. I thought it was crystally. Maybe I was just thinking of making that connection in my head. Yeah, it's these guys. Oh, I don't have screen. Hold on. I did that on intentionally, but I think I want to be able to show stuff. These boys. Hold on, I gotta like show non video participants, watch multiple streams, hide non video participants. Hmm. Yeah, that's not the guys I was thinking of actually. Maybe it was, but that's like that's not the visual I had in my head at all. I think it uh -huh. might have been the N64 one. Huh. I think they were oh, just yeah. like low poly. Yeah, those guys. These guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Polygon fighter. Okay. I've never yeah. heard of Alloy. I guess Alloy's from Brawl? Who's Alloy? That's from Horizon Zero Dawn, isn't it? Hiding Alloy team. Oh yeah, I do remember them. I didn't know they were Alloy. It's from Brawl. It's the like their story mode version enemies. Oh yeah. I forgot Brawl did that. That's kinda cool. I never played that, but I, I had like a far away appreciation of it. Just like, oh, that's cool. They kind of dropped what, that. Brawl? Yeah, I mean, just the fact that Brawl had a story mode. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't know how long or how far I actually went into that.
But yeah, I never really put that together that it was like just the the mo character models without textures, basically, right? What? The like low poly fighters. Oh yeah. Like it's just it's the same models that they use in the actual characters, right? Just well, with, like, I don't know. Flat I think shading. every. Oh well, yeah, with alloy specifically, I think it was, but. I think it's more the rig than the model. So should I try to do the Pixar elbow topology? I thought that was only for like cinematics. Like should, should I worry about that? No. I remember him saying that doesn't really matter for games. Um, it matters for armatures. That's it. And it does it does matter a lot more in cinematics, but having a basic a basic flow is important, I think. That's one thing I've definitely, I feel like I've like, I think topology is the thing I feel the most, uh, like difference in when I started to now. That's so like something that I, f I felt like I would never wrap my head around. Like it made no sense mm. and you just kind of like just fucking with it definitely helps a lot. You just got to take the time to play with it. It's like maintaining a silhouette while also making it so that it can be like deformed properly. It's hard. That's fucked. What is that? I hopped on Rust a little bit just to just to get get into some funny business. And somebody had just like taken all the doors off their base and just logged off. And just like unlocked the TC and everything. There's just a bunch of shit in there, so I just like ran in and sealed it. And then I got to just play from a base for a little while, which is nice. I went from nothing to having like a two story little base with a bunch of like revolvers and shit in it. So it wasn't anything crazy, but it was just enough to, you know, try to make some plays. Yeah. Um, that's not right. That's not how I should do that. So you could definitely see why I considered leaving this off stream. This is like, I feel like this is such a slow process, but whatever. <clears throat> I 
Um, and then I, I remember I previously had said that like, um, I was struggling to see like the big problems with Bio Mutant. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was more due to me. I think what I what it was was that I just wasn't doing the main story mission at all. I was just doing side quests a bunch. So I kind of assumed that like the weird dialogue and like the iffy plot shit was just side quests. But the problem yeah. is the main story. The main story fucking uh -oh. it sucks. It's so bad. I mean, we kind I saw a little bit of that, I feel like. Yeah, with like the the story, the way they try to do the duality system. Yeah. It's kind of weird because like you can technically just do both. Like you can be good and evil. I maxed out all my good points before I even touched the main story, just fucking around the side quests. Mm -hmm. And then I started doing evil shit and it didn't subtract my good points. It just added oh. evil points so I can just do both. So it's convenient, but it also is kind of narratively like what the fuck? Like what is this character? Like I'm just a complete psycho. But yeah, the characters are just, like, completely fucking awful. They have, like, nothing. The dialogue is so weird. The di dialogue, like, feels like placeholder dialogue. It literally feels like they were just... They hadn't hired their writer yet, and then just, like, had to launch the game anyways. But the game... I still like the gameplay, and I still like the side quests. I like that the side quests had a pretty good amount of variety because a lot of the times it was like you know in games like that it would be like oh go kill this group of people or go pick up x amount of items and i feel like the side quests in bad mutant generally are a little more outside of the box than that still not great though i still don't know if i would give it a mixed review i'd probably just give it like just flat positive, but whatever. I understand it more now. Shadow Moses. God, as I'm saying, I understand topology better. I make this butt. <laughs> I make this butt. <laughs> I did a deep dive into Metal Gear's lore for a while, and I just reached a point where I just, like, I just couldn't care anymore. Like, it's so hard to keep up with. It's like, it's comparable to Kingdom Hearts, but I would say it's almost worse. I don't know, though. Because, like, Kojima gets meta with it. Like, he's telling, like, meta narratives about, like, how hard it is to make a sequel for games and, like, shit like that. On top of also t telling a narrative of, like, you know, these actual people in the world. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't, um, only people I know who really know the lore are, like, people who are really into politics and, like, international stuff. 
Because it's like a... <clears throat> what's the word? Uh, it's like a... The story's like written as parallels to real life. Yeah. It's definitely good. Like I've watched uh, like analyses, analyses, and put I don't know, analyses. What is the word there? Um, Multiple analysis videos, I suppose. Yeah, I think it's analysis. Analyses. I don't fucking know. Um, but yeah, I've watched people like break down why they think Metal Gear Solid Two, for example, is like this genius narrative thing and. They make convincing arguments, but again, it, it, that those type of things seem to go more into the meta side of it than like what actually happens, you know. That's nice. Oh, I cut it in half. I just realized that. It's supposed to go do 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 after that. Oh. So the other half is in some random game, I guess. Or I just cut it out completely. Actually, does GTA 1 have licensed music? Fuck. I guess I'll find out. Oh no, it doesn't. Okay. Grand Theft Auto! I wish GTA 5 was easier to play. I hate how much, like, bullshit there is to get into the online. Yeah. <clears throat> if it was more, I'm... if it was more just like hop in and play kind of thing, I'd be way more willing to play it. I think I want to make um, my GTA guy part of the part of the lore yeah what was your character's name Mippy uh, Mippy High Roller Pippy High Roller oh Pippy High Roller yeah but just a, a an old man like James Spader but with a pink flat top and like I feel like that would that works really well with the the whole thing I was trying to do of like old men who are really into being superheroes or really into superhero stuff yeah god this but i want to make him a i was thinking of putting of doing like a like a street racing uh like group or something i'm trying to figure out exactly how to fit that in but it's like a street racing episode That he's I could see of. him fitting into that, yeah. As like a racer. SNK. He's so verbose. I do wonder if, like, when GTA 6 will ever happen. They need, like, big gaps between their games now. But it has been a while since Red Dead 2, so I don't know. They just did an update on it. Red Dead 2 or GTA 5? Uh, GTA. So it'll probably be a while. 
And they did the the big heist. They added a new heist like a few months ago. This could just be separate teams though, right? Yeah, I'm sure it is. I've I've heard Rockstar like works their people really hard. Yeah. I've heard bad shit about Rockstar for sure. I'd probably take a job there though. Yeah. Even even despite that. It would just scare me, and I'd have to, like, prepare myself for, like, all the cramming. Or, what's the word? Crunching. So I'm sure there's a ton of that. S-N-K The Snake Company Snake Okay, I think this can definitely come down a few polys There we go, okay. Clean that up a little bit. It's funny how, like, how much of the process is just, like, completely unrecognizable from what it eventually becomes. Like, I feel like this is such a different... The texture just makes such a big difference, is, is I guess what I'm trying to say. Oh, yeah. I'm excited to do an animation jam. I want to, I want to do, like, walk cycles and shit like that. I think like I, that's where I'm, I might have the hardest time. Well, I was thinking I, I could set up my Vive and we could do some mocap shit. And I could just, like, you could commission a mocap from me. And then I send it to you. And we could just yeah. be on the webcam through the jam. And you could be like, oh, do this more, or accentuate this more, or whatever. And then you kind of just clean that up. Because if we make that our workflow, I feel like that'll let us get good results easily, but also teach us a lot about animation. I feel like that's better yeah, than definitely. just starting from scratch. Also, that just sounds like fun. Yeah. Maybe I just merge these. My guy, like, naturally has this monkey shape in his face. Oh, yeah. That's pretty cool. I don't know what I did, though. I guess it's <laughs> this. There's Do you not like want hidden... that? Well, I just... I'm more just curious. Oh, there it is. That's why.
Yeah, I'm not sure how to do a, a butt here. I guess, I mean, it generally works, especially if I do smooth shading, it looks fine. I was having a lot of trouble with that, and I, um, I searched pants. I found a picture of, like, just some slacks, but, like, from behind, and it shows you, like, how the pants, like, what, what direction the pants get, like, tightened, you know? Like, where the folds are can kind of help you with topology. Hmm. Like wherever the tight, the, wherever the tensest part is on clothing is usually where like a try would be, or a, you know, a five point or a five line point. I guess just in flat shading, triangles pop out so much. And I guess I shouldn't worry what it looks like in flat shading, because I'm not going to do that. Just anytime I do a triangle, it like, jumps out to me so bad. Yeah, but if, look at it as if, like, like, what is it jumping out as, you know? Like, what does it look like? Because you can use that jumping out as, you know, false, false detail, in a way. Hmm. I think I'd, it'll be years before I can face that. This is another song I get stuck in my head a lot. Dur, 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 dur. Do you think that you'll do the the jean shorts with this guy? Yeah, I think so. Cool. I'm gonna try to stay pretty accurate to the- I still want him to look like that dude. Maybe not at a lawsuit level, but... I definitely want him to be like some, somewhat like recognizable. I may have already blown that though. <laughs> So yeah, there's like a lot of this detail is going to be lost for sure. And that's something that, do you think I could still kind of try to do that normal thing? Or is that if I was going like higher poly still? Like you if I could, could try to bake this? Oh, I guess, yeah, then it would have the seam too, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I don't care. It's not worth also, it. Also, it's, it's generally a better idea to like, usually people do normal maps for, um, like more detail and also like for preserving um, materials in their like 
like uh, when you bake, if you bake and you have like a reflective thing, it'll just paint the reflection on, basically. You know what I mean by that? Um, like it'll become a texture, kind of. Basically, yeah. That's what baking is. <clears throat> but a, a lot of times people will like do that. You remember how I had like all those bumps on that thing with the shader? I, I made that like just like random shape. No. It was all bumpy. It was. I could do it really fast. Oh wait, yeah, with like a displacement map. This thing. Yeah, yeah. So people, like, if you do a displacement map and then you save the normals, the displacement will become part of the normals, I believe. Oh. But you, you could do it like this. It's <clears throat> normal maps are like, um, like uh, chips in a wall. You know, like if you were to make a cement wall and you want it to look like there's holes in it, like little pores. Yeah, because you wouldn't do geometry for that. That would be insane. Yeah. One thing I'm thinking is if I should, uh, if I should have these as separate, like if I should separate the limbs. I guess that's something I could just do later. But like if I could, like with the bending, rather than it like deforming it, if it's just two different things that are clipping into each other. At least for the arm and the shoulder, I generally have felt that that looks a little better on low poly shit, but. Yeah. I guess it's pretty easy to just switch between them, so I shouldn't worry too much. Also, I realized I was wrong. I said that the last character I had made was our last jam, but I forgot about Jeff. But I don't know if he really counts, because oh, yeah. it was like the robot where it was just a bunch of solid individual pieces that I just, like, weight painted. Like, well... That was true for the hands, hands and the feet and the head, but the suit itself I actually had to do like real weight painting on. Yeah, that's still like one of the fa my favorite things I've made. I, I love Jeff. That's like my go-to VR chat avatar now. Oh man, I really didn't do as many like. I don't know, are there any, like, big loops you think that are, like, missing? Like, what? what is something mm. I should have... No, I mean, for low poly, I was thinking, like, the eyes are one that I see all the time, but that, that wouldn't be for this. Yeah, that's true. This is kind of different one than, like, low poly. Could I just dissolve that? Maybe... Uh, I didn't do it either yet, but ears... Oh, yeah, I think those should be a separate object. I don't know, though. Maybe I could get away with just, like, extruding something. If I just, like, delete this face. And then I go, like, ba bing ba bing Bing, 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 bing. Oh, it won't even let me do that. Oh, like that.
It sounds like Battle of Hell. Yeah, I, mean, I thought I heard Kessin. <laughs> it was so weird to me that Kessin's like a real thing. I, th I always thought that was just Donkey saying Tekken wrong. I don't know about this. Yeah, I feel like he says Gen 10. What is he saying? Gundam? Gundam Battle Assault. That's but not what he said. What the fuck? Gen 10. Battle is who? Is it just like, is the ear placement wrong? Is that not where ears are? Is that... <clears throat> That's too far. Too far back. Oh, yeah. It like, the ear turns into the jaw pretty much. More like there. That's going to take some work, but... Let's see if I can work that. it is. Turn up your speakers for. Kenten, Battle of he Hell. Says Ken -ten. He says Kenten, Battle of Hell. There's no way he doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't have an accent for anything else. Yeah, he just goes, Kenten, Battle of Hell. It's not like a, a, a speaking thing. Kenten, Battle of L. <laughs> no. What is I can't Gundam believe he's supposed to be saying Gundam. That's. I'm gonna look at what Gundam is in Japanese, and maybe it's pronounced differently. It's just like Gundam is the most. It's such like a distinct noise. I just can't imagine getting that wrong. Yeah, I mean, it, this says just Gandamu. Yeah, that's what I would have expected. Ken Ten, <laughs> Battle of Hell. <laughs> that guy got paid for that. <laughs> That's a good take. Oh, I thought we were gonna get one more. There we go. I think the ears look okay. They at least show up in like the silhouette. like meaty little chunk ears. Well, I guess I should look at the actual guy. How much do his, his ears poke out? I feel like he didn't have very distinct ears. Ah, uh, Yeah, it's in my search history now. Shows up immediately. Uh, apparently this is wait never mind this is just bizarre I d I don't know anything about Gundam so I, I think it's just I'm just lost <laughs> I'd like to get into Gundam cause like you know big robots fighting and it's all iconic and everyone fucking talks about it but there's like 5 billion starting points and it's been going yeah. for like 30 years it's just like what, yeah, it's like, just a different culture altogether. How do you just like jump into that? Like you don't. You have to have just been following it. I feel like, or just it pick doesn't one. Doesn't say anything. It doesn't say anything about the voice guy. I love work the drivers. He has pretty flat back ears, I guess. 
they don't pop out, so I think this is fine. If anything, they probably need to go back a little bit more. A little bit more like that. This is uh this game is the first time that a uh, a side story manga character was voiced by an American before like before, before the dub. Japanese. Oh. Yeah. I don't know what that means really. But yeah, I think that's the uh, the real hard thing for me with Gundam would be like I could see I could see knowing maybe the names of the Gundams, but the people I couldn't I I don't know. I don't know if I could memorize all the characters too. Yeah, especially like multiple generations. I don't know, I manage yeah. it for JoJo, I guess. I guess that's true. They have stands and I, I don't remember like I can name a lot of stand users and stands like off the top of my head, so I probably I I definitely can't do that for like You've only seen one or... part. Oh yeah, okay. I was gonna say you only like, seen I'm, one I'm part with stands. Just uh, just animes that I've seen with like their cuz I was just thinking like my hero quirks have names and I Yeah, guess... but JoJo stand names are all like songs, so they're so easy to remember. Yeah. That's true. Some of them, some of them are, they're, they're all puns really in, in my hero. I just don't know any of them. And they're not silly. Yeah. If the names. Definitely a little more try hardy. If the names were just like, what? Every time you see them, it's like, wait. Like, uh, dirty deeds done dirt to cheap. Wait, what do you say? D4C. I'm gonna look up quirks really quick. I wanna know. I remember there was like a. I mean, isn't, like, aren't there quirks just like super simple names? No, I feel like they had. I feel like they. Like, a lot of them are, but I feel like some of them had. Like, what's Todoroki's quirk? I feel like it's just called, like, uh, fire and ice like he doesn't no, have like he... a fancy name does he and like Bakugo's quirk isn't it just like just nitroglycerin or something well okay like one for all that's that's I think what put it in my head that they oh have yeah somewhat they have name names but yeah a lot of these are some of these are lame and some of them have actual names like hair control is one of them but then another one is called good ear <laughs> and then another one is called Giant Monkey. Sensing a theme. Black Whip, Blade Tooth, Blood Control. So I, I, in my mind, all their quirk names were just like descriptions of their quirks. Yeah. I don't know why I thought more were the other way. Maybe I'm thinking of a... Uh, Something else. In my head, they all had like dumb names. I mean, there's One Piece. One Piece is kind of like that. I guess that is. That must be it. Because in One Piece, all the fruit, like their powers, are named after the fruit they ate, and the fruit is always named like the most simple, like yeah, cartoony version of whatever the power is. Like the gum gum fruit or the string string fruit. Oh, this song is so bad. <laughs> <laughs> this is awful. <laughs> oh. I forgot about this game. This game sucks so bad. Now I'm just on the IGN's 100 best superpowers. I had a I thought about... What number one is. Another, oh yeah, let's see what number one is. Well, I guess or I could try want, to guess. Some, yeah, you could do some... Um, 
so I guess what has been their like their references? Like, have they been talk? Is it specifically anime or like video games or is it just open? It seems like it's mostly American stuff, like comics. Well, okay, so here they yeah, like here they have an X Men. Then they have they have Abe from Oddworld in here. The fuck? They have what they is have his guy, power? What, I thought he just they have like the Destiny has they have people Destiny. follow him. Destiny Two. Are they ranking they, it on like most powerful or just like coolest? Uh, let me see. Best. <laughs> <laughs> All. Oh, both. okay. We judged each power on the following criteria. Uh, gadgets and tech aren't special abilities, so Bruce and Tony will have to sit this one out. Being really, really good at something like Green Arrow isn't enough. Uh, it must be super. It's the result, not the means, that define the power. So while magic is awesome, it's not a power by our guidelines. Magic lets you do cool things like conjure fire and fly, so fire manipulation and flight are the powers, not magic itself. Context of where power is used matters. Superman on Krypton isn't super powered, but on Earth he is because of the yellow sun. With that out of the way, well, they, okay. So, so I don't I know. Give I, you, I guess, yeah, give, give me, you, like, the top I'll give something. I'll you hundred. You're gonna get. You're gonna read a hundred powers to me? No, I'll just read the bottom five. Okay. Number one hundred. Produce bouncing gold balls. Who does this? Who does that? Um. I don't know why it doesn't say. <laughs> they just made that one up. No, there's a picture here, of it happening in the comics against Iron Man. And it's, it's big wheel. It's this guy, and he's going, gold balls, gold balls. <laughs> and then he shoots the gold balls. So there is someone maybe named Gold Balls. Uh, he, uh, if anything, he'd be Gold Ball, I feel like. I don't know. Maybe they would <laughs> Maybe they would go all the way with that, though. Number 99 is Super Maggots. You can, uh, they should say, oh, here we go. They do say, notable user. Oh, the guy is named Gold Balls. <laughs> <laughs> And then another X-Men was named Maggot, and he could make maggots grow out of his body. Okay, so I don't think it's remotely possible for me to guess the number one, but... Uh... Well, I think they get more obvious as they go up. hundred and... Wait, what? Why is this? What the fuck? <laughs> Anthem. Paid promotion by Anthem. Number 101. What? Anthem paid money to be number 101? On the top 100 <laughs> superpowers tier list? And it's... And they don't even have a... You don't have powers in that a, game. You're just in a mech suit. I know. The power is strength. And it's That's, 101. Um, that goes against the criteria that they said to include. Well, That's they put not it in super. between... They put it in between 96 and 95. Well, how so is that probably, 101? <laughs> it's 101 because they were like, Hey, do you want to pay to be on our list? And then they just put them. <laughs> they didn't even try to rank it. They're like, "Fuck it, we just got to talk about Anthem somehow." Ninety-four. No one else is doing it. Devil. Ninety-three evil projections. <laughs> this is this is, this is uh, harkening back to my favorite uh, bit we ever did in Drawn Bullshit. It was when oh, we did yeah. the the superpower generator. It was like the funniest thing to me still. Like I still go back and watch that sometimes. The amount of like insane shit we got rolled. <laughs> it was like there was one where it was like Tobe has the incredible power to like turn pigs into rocks when it, when it's a half moon, but his weakness is that he's incredibly powerless. <laughs> so he just can't do that. He just lied. You remember uh Remember what I said? They have the Destiny guys in here? Yeah. They don't. <laughs> Number 102. Paid promotion by Anthem. Control over the elements. So, wait, you just saw Anthem guy and thought it was Destiny guy? You tell me. So they have that many... Oh my god, how is that not Destiny? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that is so Destiny. Yeah, Anthem just got... Crush by destiny. <laughs> that sucks. Uh, number ninety is detachable limbs. 
I guess you could see. Is, uh... <laughs> he just hits it. Well, just punch it. <laughs> How many of these are paid promotion by Anthem? How often do they do this? Well, they say. They say when they are. Okay. Understand all languages. That's pretty good. Superpowered tattoos. That's... Come on. Lame this guy. Is, this is just a weird list. Oh, here's another anthem. Super speed. 103. But that's probably, given to them by the suit. That Probably on the list again. Maybe I'm wrong. I thought I thought it was all I thought they were just like normal people that had mech suits, but I could be wrong about that. Maybe they do have superpowers. Yeah. Regardless. It's still really not, silly. Yeah. Super you would not have invention. included that. This is a skill, but I guess because it's superhuman. This is weird. What's the skill? Superhuman invention skill. Intu intuitively being able to invent complex creations. That's just open. Tony. That's Tony Stark. They specifically said Tony can't be on here. And then that's. No, I think he's not superhumanly inventive. Like Forge and Silar are. Man, household names. Forge. Silar. Do you remember when do you remember when Marvel announced that like they had these two new characters that were like uh, they were like sorry. cousins or something? And they were called like <laughs> they were called like Safe Space and Snowflake. And they just had like these awful powers. Fuck, I don't remember what they were, but there's just like just these sad characters. And it was like very obviously trying to like Wait, where was it from? Sorry. I think it was Marvel. Was reading. What was it though? Um there there was just these really shitty heroes called Safe Space and Snowflake that were oh. like trying to play on the whole, you know, like left leaning mm -hmm. thing. And that was just really bad and their powers sucked. And there was something else weird about them. I don't remember what it was. There was something like off. But either way, whatever. I just remember them being funny. So the person they used uh, as an example for that one, Silar, from what I can tell is from the Heroes wiki, from NBC's Heroes. Oh. But his power, I believe, was that he could kill somebody and take their power. That was the, his whole thing. So I don't know what... So then somebody else had that power and he took it? Maybe. Oh, maybe. Why did that? Why did he come up for that? Why didn't the original guy just come up for that? I don't know. Bizarre. Oh, Silar from Dota. Oh. oh. I bet it's from Dota. Oh, no. Silar is a Chinese professional Dota player. No. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm getting more and more further convinced that I have no chance of guessing number one, but I guess as we go up, maybe. Either way, I mean. Terrible, <laughs> oh. terrible list. Yeah. We can only spend so long on this. We gotta. Oh god. Eighty-three is empathy. Oh come on. That's not a superpower. What does that mean? I guess a super super empathy <laughs> lets you lets you feel everyone's feelings at the same time. The ability to fully comprehend the moods and emotions of others. That's uh that's a black mirror thing. Self confidence. I I hate this list. <laughs> and then number eighty one is mimic other powers. <laughs> that's just uh, much that's, that's so much. good. Give me like, give me like the five, like the top five without the number one. Like I give me duplication, darkness dimension. Come on, <laughs> converting sound to light. <laughs> so they just yell, and it like brightens up a dark room. Yeah, and it it turns into light. <laughs> <laughs> That's not helpful. Turn light into sound. Oh, look at this guy, huh? Oh fuck! I flat I did the shrink wrap modifier and it flattened his ear to the side of his head.
Number 36 is a cybopath, which I've never heard of, but it's the ability to get psychic impressions from the food you eat. It's from something called Chew. That's kind of my hero, the guy who, uh, Mirio's yeah. homie. I guess that's kind of... This is the, he once bit into a detached finger to get a vision of the murder. the past, I guess. Bone Claws is 33. Bone Saw is ready! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I guess Power Stealing is, is different. They put Kirby as Power Stealing. Yeah, that's fair. I think it uh, is Kirby within his own lore is kind of, like, ridiculous. Yeah, he's the king. Br <laughs> Danger Warning. Spider-Man, Spider yeah. Super intelligence, I guess, is different from super inventiveness. Heat vision. Weapon hands. Weapon hands. Reality warping. Force field projections. Spider webs is better than <laughs> reality warping somehow. <laughs> Reality warping. Yeah, it's twenty-five. And now we're just getting into the the elements. Ice manipulation, electric manipulation, X-ray vision. Do they even try water. to justify like why it's at its place, or do they just describe the power? Um, no, they just describe the power. Yeah, that's what I would expect. It. <laughs> they have atomic manipulation below healing factor. Why? <laughs> Magnetic manipulation. Teleportation. Paid promotion by Anthem. Is that 10, 1010? <laughs> 104. Mind control. Time travel. Immortality. Immortality is number 13. So what do you think is even in top 10? That's I, really... I, try and guess anything in the top 10. I feel like we I'm haven't had any trends of like... It's not like getting stronger... We passed reality oh. manipulation like 20 things ago. That's like, that's the best thing you can have. How do you get better than reality manipulation? Well, reality manipulation requires you to be awake, right? I guess. <laughs> so is, is insomnia in the top 10? Is that what you're saying? No, none of these really are. But I was just saying, like, reality ma manipulation, I could see maybe they were like, oh, that's hard because I'm dumb and don't know. I don't know what <laughs> but then I would you do just with say reality I'm smart. I, I rewrite reality so I know what to do with rea reality manipulation. No, but you're too dumb to know how to do that. <laughs> I guess. You go, what do I do? What do I do? Oh, uh, oh, uh, I'm dumb. Uh. Unlike number nine, telekinesis. Okay, so I have to try to guess something in the top ten. I mean, yeah, I don't know. I'll Flight. Give you, I'll give you number nine. Flight. Flight is number one. Oh, let's go. Nice. Don't know why you could easily fall. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, I I kind of expected them to have already covered flight and anthem. Yeah, that's the thing. The anthem ones don't. They did do that one, but they don't. Uh, it doesn't really it. count. Yeah, they don't override. Probably number because they five. added the Anthem ones after the fact. Yeah, number 105 is also flight. <laughs> That's funny. Invulnerability? Um, I don't know, fire breathing? Fire manipulation is number four. I'm just thinking of like... But they have it's just Mario classic superpowers now. Because it seems like the top seem to be like what you would think of yeah. when you think of super. So I don't know, laser eyes, laser vision. No, that that was in that's in top twenty five. I'm pretty sure. Um, did we do invisibility? That is number two. Here we go. You yeah. got number one, number two, and number and five. Number four. Oh, number four. And I guess, wait, is this real? Yeah. 
yeah, they there are some overlaps. I've realized now the ones that are overlapped with Anthem have a little two next to them. <laughs> Flight this part two. Um, X-ray vision. Uh, that was that was before. You will never guess number seven. <laughs> I will say that. Okay. Even though it is part of a, there is one superpower or one superhero who is not very popular, but he is well known, and it is his power. I'll just never. I don't think you'll guess it. Um. Card throwing? No. Seeing Gambit. Is that even Gambit's power? What is Gambit's? Whatever. I don't he care. Like, he <laughs> charges things up. Oh, so just like anything? Yeah. He could do it to a car. Um. I don't know. I think I. I think I'm okay. To just hear the rest of them. I can't think of any other like. I, like the obvious ones. Number ten was shape shifting. Okay, yeah. Number nine, telekinesis. Number eight, invulnerability. Number seven is the Green Lantern's power, hard light constructs. I I, I can see that. I guess. I mean, reality it manipulation is really strong. But I would have never thought to. <laughs> it's like oh, a lame uh, version of reality manipulation. But hard light constructs specifically is such a strange name for the power. Is that number seven you said? Yeah. Number six is telepathy. Yeah, I could. Number, I probably I could see that. Number five is super speed. Yeah, I probably should have said that. That's more. That's another like really obvious one. And then super strength is number three. Okay, that's not too bad. Those are just pretty normal. Hard yeah. light constructs, those. So generally, I, as the list went on, it just became more and more, like, well-known powers. Yeah. And then also hard number, light constructs. The power... The number 12, the power cosmic. What does that mean? While one can only possess certain amounts of the power cosmic... <laughs> Wielding god level energy really results in having any selection of powers under your belt. <laughs> the Burger King foot lettuce voice. Teleportation, flight, super strength, all of it. <laughs> so it's just when you're a kid and you're just like, I have everything. I have all yeah, the powers. I mean, it, it is, they put the power of god at number 12. <laughs> so it's not what's strongest, it's just most popular. No, it's it's got to be it's, just most popular. It's best. Best for right. the average man. Just vague. Because there are, like, so many loophole answers you could give to, like, what's the best superpower. Yeah, I think if... I bet it's... Just the power to have all powers. Yeah, let me... Let me get number 12. You win! You don't want number one? Uh, power of flight? But I have. Uh, <laughs> if you have uh, reality manipulation, you just fly. You just ride it so that you have wings, or that you just don't have gravity affect you. I think I'll take. Uh, Give me the anthem one. We're we're running out of these number ones, number twos. Are you sure you don't want invisibility? I think I'll just have the power cosmic, please. Yeah, I mean, if you 12. if you gave them the list and you were like, pick from this list, I think it would be it would be a problem. Like nobody would fucking pick the top five. But like, if it was yeah. ju if you just asked somebody on the street, like, what what power do you want? They would just say the top five. Oh, I, I wonder if that's what they did. I wonder if it was like they just asked around the office. Yeah, if it was just and that a, one asshole was <laughs> uh, probably reality manipulation. <laughs> yeah, it was just somebody like like someone who was doing the list. It was just like, uh, what superpowers are there? Speaking of superpowers, though, there was a a Mippy thing I kind of wanted to bring up. Well, I guess oh, yeah. it's not strictly a Mippy thing, but I have you put any thought to like 
how specific powers get assigned to specific people within like the Mippyverse, or is it kind of just random? Um, no, I was working with pretty much that it was random. Besides that, I, I showed you that like color wheel idea. Yeah, but like, how does this specific like does it correlate to their personality or something or like? No, I think the it's the. I don't know actually the the main thing I was working with is that like the color defines like the nature of the power. Yeah, I think I I think I get that. I'm more just specifically talking about like uh, the assignment pro like when the yeah. untangling happens. Like, why did Cassidy oh, yeah. get an electricity power? You oh know? no, she had it before that. Or they right, have, but like when the before. when the chip happens and, or whatever. I mean, like yeah, yeah. when the powers first start. Oh, uh, I guess really it's just um, because it's not. It's not like they all have them in and then it starts. It's like a gradual it's, thing. Yeah, so I think it would be like almost in order. Like it depends on when you got it. Because I was thinking. Um, I don't know if it's even, like, canon with the Fantastic Four comics, or, like, if it's just that one shitty movie, but I always really liked the way the Fantastic Four did that whole thing, where it was literally just, like, what you were doing at the moment of, like, the impact. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know what, like, the, the event is a more gradual thing, so I don't think it could really work, but it would just be a fun idea to have, like, a whole power system based on that rather than just being like those four or those five people um just got it while they were in what's it called base yeah like if it was just the whole world got powers based on what they were doing I guess then you'd have to write that it was uh I'm sure there'd be a lot of duplicates in that case though but still it was definitely yeah. something I was just like considering that could be like a, a fun way to spin that yeah, I had forgot that. that uh, <clears throat> I forgot that aspect of it altogether. That's like something that always stuck with me about Fantastic Four, because I don't have a lot of connection to the Fantastic Four, really. I don't really care much. I don't remember if that's how they get them in the. I don't even know how they get their powers, like, in the comics, you know? Yeah, I mean, I've only That's... seen that one movie, the uh, the shitty movie, um, but not the one with Michael B. Jordan, the, like, original shitty one. Yeah. That's, like, my main connection to Fantastic Four, unfortunately. So I'm going kind of hard on the hands. I think this is a little more than I expected to do. I mean, oh, I guess I just, it's it's an eight-sided thing. I just remembered something about the powers. I was trying to think, like, I had thought of something related to it, but I didn't remember what it was. But something slightly related to it was that I was going to make the villain um, somebody whose powers that he could like read the exact like source code basically of a power so that I mean it's not source code but basically I was thinking uh, I was thinking of having it like having it be like he or like people don't know the specifics about their own power like it's not like you remember in my hero he like just goes to the doctor or something oh yeah and the doctor's like oh you have this power i was th
what their shit does. And Sorry, one more time. I just cut out for a second. Oh, just that they um, they don't know exactly like what their, what the specifics of their power is, and they only know from experience. Oh, okay, yeah. And he can like look at the actual code yeah, of so it and understand. Say, like, yeah, like you know, you don't actually. That was I was thinking like, the way like air pressure works. There's so many different ways you could raise the air pressure of a of something. So if somebody's power was you know, raise the air pressure. They could be heating up the air. They could be teleporting things into the air. It could be... Yeah, I think my hero kind of touches on that. Like, when they said... Uh, I think in the first episode they explained that. There's, like, a guy who shoots water out of his hand. And they're like... Oh, originally we classified it as... He, he creates water. But we found out that he's actually collecting the moisture in the air. So it's actually, yeah. like... Exactly. moisture collection it's not like water creation but they're like effectively the same power yeah so that, that was something that I think I, I, I did like the idea for that could definitely be cool because then it also makes this one because the, the real the real storyline like the real big storyline for it I think for me in my head is that in that world there's no teleportation powers at all. It's just like not possible or it's deemed impossible to have them. And then you, the story just follows people who have them basically. Like, I, or where basically this the, the villain can determine basically if, if you do. So he's just maybe collecting people that like could technically have that power in a sense and he's like yeah. gonna awaken it or whatever well it's more like um i think like the way i was doing it is that or i want to do it is that the the government is because the the way like everyone gets their job is through the government in this so they like they just get like uh assigned basically and, uh, I lost my trade of thought. So. <laughs> <laughs> Happens just that fast. You're saying government assigned... Um, powers? powers? Whatever. Or no, not powers, jobs. Yeah. Roles based on the power. So the government knows about the powers. And they, um... <clears throat> part of, like, they have a little... They have, like, a... They, they control everybody's lives, but it's generally not bad. Um, but they do have the one secret agenda of, like, they are trying to figure out if anyone has a teleportation power. Because that, like... It, it, it. I mean, I think I got the idea from Fooly Cooly. I just really like the idea of just now imagining, like, you were going on, like, an Alex Jones level rant. <laughs> about like like the real world like just oh, clip yeah. just clipping that as if you're like <laughs> really saying this <laughs> mm. yeah that's a good way to take that i think it's interesting thing that everybody wants regardless like how lord of the rings has the ring like you gotta have something that anyone is willing to be corrupted for or anyone is capable of being corrupted by. Yeah. In Naruto, it's just like Orochimaru could uh, choose you and then bite you. Yeah, it's just power in general. I feel yeah, like in like, Naruto. Yeah. And I get the like, there's tons of stories where it's like power corrupts. Especially in superpower stuff, like the boys i think is about that invincible i think yeah i haven't seen either of those things though so i, I really want to watch invincible though i'm glad it was made into a show because uh it's a robert kirkman comic the guy who did mm -hmm. the walking dead and i like wanted to read that and now it's like more interesting to watch it i'd say probably but like it seems like it's doing really well like people seem to be into it yeah, it's it's cool to 
I feel like there was a, a period of time when we were in high school where there were more like original superhero stories coming out. That weren't necessary. Wait, what the fuck? Oh, oh no. Uh oh, what's the problem? Hey, oh, it's not that bad. I have a five side that this whole time I was like, this area is good. This area is completely done. It just means I have to pay more attention. I'm so glad I only threw the hands once. Thank God for mirroring. That's the thing is I'm kind of worried about is I feel like I honestly could have just gotten away with just making the hands just like finger one is just this whole thing and then the thumb, you know? Yeah. Like we pro probably could do those hands, but I don't know. I just feel iffy about that. Yeah, so I definitely think I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, doing one of those things a day. I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they get harder as they go on, so maybe not. I won't be able to do, complete an entire one every day, but I'll at least try to work on it a little bit. The tutorials, that is. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, they definitely do get harder, but I also. I, I wouldn't be surprised if you were able to finish them faster. Because it's definitely in a field that I need to get better at, which is probably good. I just worry that too often I'm going to be just like, okay, put this function here, okay, like, like I'm not going to be getting that further level. We'll see though, I don't know. Ghost in the shell. There's so many, like, huge important things that I just haven't watched. Like, Ghost in the Shell. I don't know if it's, like, critically important. I just feel like I see so much. I feel like I see Ghost in the Shell a lot. But that's not a yeah. great example, I guess, though. Like, I mean. The movie came out a few years ago. That's true, yeah. I would like it if uh, if Alita got picked up to do like a full anime series of that could be cool. Cause they had like that one OVA, and then they had the movie. Oh, I didn't know that. I mean, I've only seen like a handful of. Uh, what are they fucking called? Ghibli movies? I probably need to watch oh, yeah. more of those. That See, that's the, I would say those are much more important to watch than... Yeah, I just couldn't think of a good example off the top of my head, but there's definitely a lot of things yeah. that I'm just missing out on. Even then, they're not... It's not like they're... Like, you're, you'll never be quizzed on them by I've seen the two... Insane. I've seen the two big ones, I feel like. It's Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke. Yeah. But oh, there's yeah. definitely other much. ones. I'm trying to think now, because those are the... I would agree. Well, I, I, I think Mononoke is my favorite, but Spirited Away is the the Oscar winner. The shot where that guy... He blows that guy's arm off with the arrow. That's... Oh. Oh, yeah. That was crazy. That's oh, like the yeah. biggest thing uh, that stuck with me. Nausicaa. You think that's up there? For me personally, that that's my favorite. Mononoke is the most epic one, I would say, because it's got such a build up. Like the whole thing is a huge build up. Yeah. 
but Nausicaa is I, I think Nausicaa is like the the precursor to Mononoke because they kind of have the same story or the same message and I hadn't seen Akira since you sat me down to it too oh, yeah. that's another one I think it's just like uh, it's it's easy to get into animation without ever watching it an animated movie yeah but I saw I saw Howl's Moving Castle when I was really young actually I, I should always... probably mute this I'm just not that's Duel of the Fates oh that'll probably get me struck right I don't know you'd think that they play that in like battle not battlefield what's it called battlefront that's true. <clears throat> but they play the Rugrats theme in the Rugrats game. Yeah. And I didn't get caught no, for that. that would... Oh, yeah. But I, I did when say, I played the, the trailer. I don't get it. It's the same song. I guess it's just the visuals. I mean, do they... They don't get paid for trailers. They pay... They pay for trailers to be seen. Yeah. It's kind of going against the point of a trailer there. I mean, maybe it just didn't even recognize that it was a trailer. Well, no, it linked it specifically it to the video. Oh. It must be just then the stuff that they have, like... <clears throat> the stuff that they have listed as being owned by somebody. Yeah. You know, like, under the description. That's their big dogs. You know, all grown up when they're adults... Or yeah, uh, teenagers. Um, yeah, they did a episode of like actual Rugrats where they like tested that first. I didn't know that. Oh really? There was like a like a like it was a test pilot for all grown up, but not really because it was just an episode of the Rugrats. But it was like a dream sequence where they just become teenagers for an episode, and then they oh. like and then they like wake up, and it's the exact same designs and everything. And then oh. people like liked it a lot, so then they made the all grown up like actually them grown up. I didn't. I've not thought about that in a very long time, though. All throwed up. That's the one. That's better than actual Rugrats name. They should just call it that, like the Baby's Rugrats. <laughs> yeah. All throwed up. Yeah, we all throw it up. <laughs> I feel like I haven't thought about Rugrats since, well, before we did the trailer. And yeah. Before that, it was the Destiny video. <laughs> like, I do oh, not right. think about Rugrats very often. I feel like Rugrats is like, I feel like I put that in fucking like Barney tier in my brain. It's like if really? you, I don't know, for some reason Rugrats just feels, it's like Teletubbies or Barney to me. I, it is about babies. I guess that just makes me think like, oh, that's baby shit, you know? Like I'm assuming it's for babies because it's about babies. I always remembered it for... <clears throat> Like, I always thought of it as somewhat of an adult show because they had adults talking to each other. I guess that's true. You know, they would always show, like, the parents being like, oh, man, these babies. Yeah, maybe Barney's a little harsh. <laughs> Barney is a little out there. It's just, like, teaching you how to, like, no colors. <laughs> That's like the dumbest way I could have said that. Teaching you how to know colors. <laughs> this is how you know colors. <clears throat> I don't know how I would teach someone how to know colors. I'm doing like a college course. 
your professor says that day one. Honestly, I need to take that class. <laughs> this is how you know colors. This one, this one's red. You know how I knew he that? Shows, he holds up, he holds up a black and white photo. This is how you know colors. <laughs> Fuck. Oh my god. I'm not done yet. I still gotta do the thumb. I forgot. My hands, I just went fucking sicko mode on the hands. This is way too high poly, I feel like. Oh god, it's almost 200k polys. What the fuck? Oh wait. What? No, it's no, not. There's no way. No. Because <laughs> like, it was. You can see. It was looking at the, the sculpted. Yeah. You my can, my you brain just didn't connect still. yet. <laughs> So it's at a thousand. It's at a thousand. I think for me, uh, the seeing that Peach was five thousand, actually she was specifically four thousand nine hundred ninety-six, which is some binary, some binary number. Were they? Do, they actually like did that on purpose. They're like this. It has to be X amount of polys. Um, I think so. I do think so. God, look at this. It's two faces, <laughs> two edges that I have to merge with like a fucking billion. There's so many right here, and then there's like nothing here. So I'm gonna have to just do a bunch of those little squares. Ugh. I could probably just merge a lot of these into triangles, actually. Did you ever oh, play no. uh, Pokemon Coliseum? Um, yes, yes. Coliseum was the one I had. I, I really liked Coliseum. I feel like I, that game's cool, I feel like, but I, I don't know if I... Uh, I played it a little bit, and I have, like, a fond memory of it. But I don't actually remember specifically playing it. I just remember being like, oh, that game's cool. And I remember there's a guy in there named yeah. Sek. Oh, I, yeah. I always thought it was funny that, like, if you said, like, oh, like, that's, that's sex's thing, like... Oh, yeah. Don't get in sex car. <laughs> <laughs> don't get in sex car. And I also remember there's like a hospital or something, or like a factory that you're at early mm -hmm. on, and I remember there being like a dark Lugia. Oh no, that's Gale of Darkness. Is that like a sequel to that or something? Yeah, so I think Pokemon Coliseum, I think was originally going to be called Pokemon XD, because then they made Pokemon XD Gale of Darkness afterwards huh but okay. it doesn't it's not the same guy in Colosseum you play as like a, a like a guy with gray hair and then in XD you play as like a younger kid with red hair maybe I had XD then maybe I should look this up actually yeah kind of having a that might be like a, a big moment for me you know this might be a breakthrough Oh, I didn't know they made a manga for Colosseum. This looks sick. Is this guy for Colosseum? He has an Espeon and Umbreon. Yeah, I remember him for sure. But that's why I'm unsure about... Is it, Maybe I just played both then, because I definitely played Gale of Darkness, and I can show you why I'm so certain. Actually, I don't want to get it. But I have a, a Gale of Darkness GameCube. It has, like, Dark Lugia on it or something. Yeah. Gale of Darkness here. Yeah, this is what I was thinking of, because you start out... Yeah, I do remember this guy. And then there's, like, a... Yeah, you're in, like, a hospital at the beginning. I do remember this. I'm excited to start doing GameCube games for the eye catches. There's going to be a lot of them.
it was cool what was cool about these games was that <clears throat> you weren't catch any Pokemon that you caught was like it wasn't um it wasn't random there were only specific Pokemon that you could catch and you did it by stealing them from other players or not other players but like enemies you would get in a fight and then the Pokemon has like shadow around it and you go like oh they're not taking care of it it looks evil and you'd have to kick catch it from him coincidence huh is this a coincidence what on the oh. screen Probably not. It's the same guy. This is him in his youth. Yeah. And listen the to their Mario themes. Pokemon. <laughs> and then I think I think Mario is in Pokemon. Mario's in Zelda too, so. Oh shit he is. Well they're all in Smash anyway, so. I saw somebody made like a flow chart. Of how like every single franchise ever is connected, because you could just say like, "Oh, well, Ryu was in Smash, so Mario and Street Fighter are linked, and Darth Vader was in Soul Calibur." Like you just dumb connections <clears throat> like that. So just everything is one. Yeah, Dead by Daylight. Yeah, there you go. Dead by Daylight has a place there. I love her situation. All right, what do you think Mario's going to do? What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> I, did, I, I just now looked at your screen. He's got to have, like, Marsh Stomp or, like, Vile Plume or something. Motherfucker. I thought his Mushroom, you know? What do you think he's going to do? Oh, he's a tur- oh, okay, yep. That's That's not cool, man. Did you just look up oh, Mario man. in Pokemon? Yeah. This guy is... I do not like the way certain people choose to voice act. <laughs> I don't hear it. Hmm. I don't... It, the only way I can describe it is just like... You know when you can hear that a guy is like having a ton of fun? <laughs> and doing just like the same voice over and over. Oh shit. You know when they're just like, having fun, having a great time voice acting? That's the fucking worst. <laughs> uh, it's it's a very specific kind. That face needs to go. Oh, I have to do it all over again on the bottom of the hand, I forgot. <sighs> But yeah, I feel like Coliseum definitely represented like one timeline that Pokemon could have gone down of like just a really fucking cool like open world. I don't I mean I don't know if it's actually open world, but like make it an actual RPG, you know, like a console game. Mm -hmm. And they just like for some reason didn't like it. Even now, like what is it like they have what, I don't even know. What is the one on the Switch? Sun and Moon? No, way. Sword and Shield. Sword and Shield. Have you played that? Yeah, I played through all of it. Was that good? Like, did it benefit from being on console at all, or was it basically just a handheld? Oh, yeah, I never played it on a TV. So it but seemed like say... it was just, like, another console one. I mean, it seemed like it was just another handheld one. Like, it didn't seem to do anything... Like Coliseum, I mean, was... where like Coliseum feels so different, but still the same, you know. Yeah, I would say that it. <clears throat> it, I mean, part of it was that Coliseum was made by a different company, I think. 
Hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Because the Pokemon is made by the Pokemon Company. So they're always, I think, going to be... They're going to have, like, trends, you know? But it was it was good. It just, like, the stuff that they did... Or th there was some stuff that I felt like... I read like they told me what it was and I immediately was just like okay I know I'm never gonna do that like I'm just not gonna bother with that part of it whatever yeah. it was um but it's also it's annoying because like in X and Y there was a period of time where I guess really what it is like the upper level stuff like once you beat the game once you beat the Pokemon League what happens and you can usually beat the Pokemon League really fast did you so, just fucking okay. talk during cruising USA time okay <laughs> just kidding carry on but basically the, the main thing that like is upper level about the like modern Pokemon is that they'll do secret abilities and it's usually a Pokemon has like a regular ability and then you could catch one with a, a different ability than normal and it's usually way way better in sort of a meta sense and that's just RNG like you could just find a Pokemon that has that like special no. thing the, the way it's worked is that they introduced it in one game with I forget what it was I think it was a Safari was the first way to do it you, the ones that you caught at the Safari could have it but the next game there's no safari and they have this other way of doing it and then next game it's a different way so it's basically every single pokemon game has its own way of getting the secret ability pokemon and x and y had a pretty fun way of doing it where you had three pokemon in your safari that you could catch and then you'd have to go to your friend's safari to catch their pokemon so it propped up this whole like online network of people who were just like, I have Ditto, I have you know, I have whatever. Friend me. And you yeah, I remember I, I kind of got into that on the original DS. There was like a thing you had to plug into your computer to like get into the Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. and I would like play Animal Crossing with other people and also Pokemon. I would like visit. It was like limited multiplayer though, and that it was like. Oh, visit yeah. my town or trade my Pokemon with me. It wasn't like co-op. Yeah. Whoa, whoa. That reminds me. I, I, I was like, I participated in a Animal Crossing forum, like frequently. Mm -hmm. I, I guess I don't really have any stories from that. I don't. I don't like <laughs> remember actually doing it. I just remember that it happened and just being like, oh, this is a cool little farm. I get to talk to people. And like, I remember I like found out how to change my, the color of my name. And that was hella cool. And I would like talk to people and trade shit with people and show off my town. Forums oh. are cool. Yeah. It's kind of been replaced by just like discord servers, I guess. Or yeah. just like Reddit pages. I don't know. Twitter accounts it's definitely the better way to do it I mean forms are a little more outdated for sure so you have the one bend and you got the another bend yeah oh but the what I was gonna say was just in um in sword and shield the way you would get a secret ability is by doing a raid with other players which is pretty cool but the raids are like timed so you just have to like run around for a long ass time until you see a little beacon on and then hope that you get a spot because everyone's trying to get it so it wasn't like one player hosting it or something it was just like every once in a while it would yeah, open it up just, it's just open world an open world raid but it had a, a player a cap basically of four that does so seem pretty have fun to get lucky it i tell you my cousin my cousin pre-ordered that game for me and then he moved to korea before it came oh, out yeah so I, I just don't i never got to claim that 
I don't think there's really anything I could do about that. I probably would have played it if I if that had happened. If that hadn't happened, I mean. But I don't ever see myself paying for that. And then there's that other there's like a new open world one that's coming out too, right? Yeah. I don't even know if they have like a name for that one out yet. But it looked a little rough in the trailer, but it definitely could be yeah. very promising. That looked like um that looked like it was a programming project or something, you know? Yeah. How to make Pokemon in 3D. <laughs> yeah, it, it doesn't it didn't look like a like a game project of any kind. Like it, it sucks because like that's what I want out of like a console Pokemon game. Like that's kind of yeah. what I have in my mind when I think of that. And if it feels I, like they're kind of half-hearting and doing it, and then they'll justify it, and be like, "Oh, see, it didn't sell well. We'll go back to the old formula." Yeah, I think. Well, they're doing stuff with the lore now. They have like this Pokemon Masters series, I think. They're not Pokemon. I forget what it's called. It's like Legends or something like that. But you know the you remember when we watched those like shorts? Those yeah. Animated shorts in that world. They're like adding more on or they keep adding stuff to it that like basically just adds answers questions from the game that they wouldn't they didn't answer from Sword and Shield. Mostly about people. It's just like this is his story, this is his story and you go like, Oh, okay. I get why he was in the game now. Yeah. But um, they, I think they're doing that with the, I think they're combining that with that that new game, because the new game is like set in a historical Pokemon world. That definitely seems like, cool. I'm just way more interested in like Pokemon, like actually innovating on their formula, you know? Yeah, I don't think they they it's, will. It's I think been that just... for so long. It's been the same. I feel like. I have a feeling they're gonna edit their world, and I there's always stuff they've always teased at like um, uh, like stories in the game of like Pokemon and uh, their their trainers being like like a, a trainer and Pokemon ninja combo. Those are like a thing that they've talked about a couple times. <laughs> Look at this. Yeah. <laughs> purple suit mode reminds me of like so, Bible man oh yeah so if it's like a if it's like a Sekiro a Pokemon Sekiro Pokero that could be cool I beat Sekiro oh nice last night it was, it was like really it was a perfect battle I think Because you get all these, like, you get healing items in the game that are, like, one-time healing, you know? And you yeah. never get those items again. And I had saved them all, and I basically, I used them all up until the last little bit of health, and then I killed them. Nice. And I got really lucky, and I, like, executed the... At the very end, you have to do this, like, lightning counter. I don't know if you did those. I think I did. It, I think they get introduced in the the first fight with uh, Genichiro on the tower. He like you have to jump up, counter, and then swing before you hit the ground. I had I'd missed so many of them in the fight, and then right when it mattered, I got it. Oh, it felt so good. I think I'm just gonna convert these to block fingers. We'll see. That scream was like diegetic, right? Like that was in the game. 
Or was that a part of the soundtrack? I don't know. Bang bang, put the bang bang, put the bang bang. Okay, I'm almost done here. I think I got my whole retopo done. So I guess this can do a little bit to explain a little more what the point of Retapo Reto is. Like obviously I lost a ton of detail if you compare this to this, but um, if you look at the poly count here and then the poly count here, it's just like ridiculous. You can see like when I select all these polys and like try to rotate it, actually I should probably it like lags. I think it says the frame rate somewhere, doesn't it? I don't know what. Uh, top left. <clears throat> Still, yeah. This only it, when you're playing. It just chugs. And then if I go over to this guy and the same thing, you see it's just like smooth as hell. And that same idea is just like in a game, you know. Uh, so yeah, just taking this model and making it actually usable in a game. And there is a technique that I don't fully understand and I haven't practiced yet about the normals that we were talking about earlier, where I could take all this detail that I have from the sculpt and put it on back onto here as like a normal map or whatever. If and you, um, it, would it would keep that same detail. If you go under a viewport shading, this little thing here um yeah uh, this or third one third from the from the left and then the little arrow and then at render pass go to normals oh yeah so you'd you'd be able to take that and then bake it as a as an image and, and then and then put it on here. Yeah. I can tell he has a little bit of a chest indent. I should probably fix that. Yeah, it's also very helpful just to to see the direction of stuff. Red means positive x, blue means negative x. What is black? It, um I don't know. Maybe it's actually Black means zero, X, red means positive X, and there is no negative ones. Either way, I'm going to control Z before I did all that, before I applied the mirror. The retop, it looks good. Thanks. I'm pretty happy with it. Oh, you could also see if I go, let me reapply that mirror real quick. If you look at the poly count on this guy, it's almost two it's 150k here this is 2k so huge nice. huge drop 2k is like that's like less than the bike i made <laughs> it's like a whole person yeah i guess that's more of a testament how shitty the bike is <laughs> but yeah i don't i don't know this my main problem with it is i feel like it doesn't really it doesn't not quite look like a low poly model i guess yeah, you could just do more, more selective decimating, you know. Yeah, and Maybe. I guess up close it does. I mean, I feel like this is like a like a PS2 level model. Mhm. Mm Which I guess I'm fine with. It's like gonna be like a PS2 level model with the PS1 texture. <laughs> Whatever. I mean, who cares? We'll see how it looks. I'll fuck with it. So. PS1.5. Who does your guy? What? What did you say? 1.5? PS 1.5. Oh, yeah. So, are you down to call it here and then yeah. come back tomorrow? Or do you have more work you want to do? 
I actually am very happy with the head at this point. I think the the rings are all there. Eye ring, forehead ring. Let me get ring. a good look at your guy. Yeah. Do I have those? I don't really. I have the chin ring, I guess, or the jaw ring. Yeah, I don't think I have as as good of loops as you do on the face. But mine's also way lower poly. Yeah, all I did was try and do the loops. That was like my only thing today. So, yeah. It already kind of looks like the face. The big smile. That's true. My guy has no brow. I'm realizing that now. Because I can well, just... my I mean, you can do so much. With the oh, texture. I gotta make glasses. Yeah. And should I do that now, or should I wait till tomorrow? Like, do you have anything you want to do? No, last I'm minute. I'm down to down to call it. Okay. So tomorrow I will. Well, right now I will turn down Resident Evil. Uh, tomorrow I will be taking this guy, and I will unwrap him, like so. Whoa, that's cool looking. And then I will create a texture for him. And then I will draw upon him. So this will be more in line with what you expected. Like, I guess not what you expect, but like what you've seen in prop jams, I feel like. Isn't, it's going to be the texture work. That's going to be a pretty similar workflow. I feel like Retopo and Sculpting, those have both been like completely new workflows. Comparatively. Oh, yeah. You'll have to, you'll probably want to do seams on this guy before you un unwrap. Oh, yeah. Because that's already looking fucked. He's got so many, he has so many limbs. There he is. He's done. All right, thanks for watching. We've we've created our NPCs. You can see here, Connor's made his ghost with his floating arms, and I've made Fridge Man. Ooh. Uh, goodbye. Watch again. Yeah. Yeah.